In John chapter 3 and verse 5, Jesus says you must be born of water and of the Spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of God. One thing that makes Churches of Christ unique in the religious world is our emphasis on the New Testament doctrine of baptism. But as we look at baptism and look at the doctrine of it found in Scripture, let's first and foremost make sure what we're not talking about. We're not saying that baptism literally washes away the sin. Only the blood of Christ can cleanse us from sin. We're not saying that we believe in an idea of baptismal regeneration. That is, that baptism itself, without the power of God, is what saves. That baptism, just going down in the water, has any function that saves apart from God's plan. We're not saying that we have to add to the saving work of Christ, for it's Christ who died for our sins. It's Christ who died on the cross so that we might be saved. We're not saying that baptism is a way of earning our salvation. Once again, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. It is God who saves. We're not saying that we believe that water itself saves. We're not saying that the blood of Jesus Christ is not what cleanses away our sins. And we're not saying that the water cleanses us instead of the blood. And so these myths are oftentimes circulated by those who do not believe in the biblical doctrine of baptism. And so what is it that we mean when we talk about how baptism is a part of God's plan of salvation? Well, first of all, it means that Jesus' blood cleanses us from any and all sin when we obey his plan. In Acts chapter 2, the people heard the very first gospel sermon. And they cried out to Peter. They interrupted his sermon and said, Men and brethren, what must we do? Peter responded and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. And, the blood of Jesus, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so that blood is contacted when you and I are baptized. Secondly, it means our faith is active and alive when we obey the doctrine of baptism. When we obey Jesus' commands, it shows that our faith is alive. <coughs> James chapter 2 and verse 18, James writes, But some people will say, You have faith and I have works. James says, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Faith that is not active, faith that is not obedient, is dead. We show our faith by the actions in which we do. When the people cried out asking what they needed to do, they showed their faith, they showed their response to God through their repentance and through their baptism. Number three, what does baptism mean? It means I'm surrendering myself to die with Jesus, and I'm willing to be raised to walk in newness of life. In Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, Paul discusses baptism and the symbolism of it. And he says, just as you and I died to our sins, so also Christ died for our sins. Just as you and I are baptized in water, so also Christ was buried in a tomb. And just as you and I raise up from that water to walk in newness of life as a Christian, so also Christ is raised up never to die again. Romans chapter 6, beginning of verse 3, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so also we should walk in newness of life. Number four, it means that baptism means that I believe God does a powerful working in this action of faith. In, in Colossians chapter 2, looking there beginning in verse 12, we see that we are buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Baptism is not a work of man, it is a work of God. When you and I become obedient to Christ through baptism, Christ saves us, and we're saved by obeying his word. Number five, 
What does baptism mean? Baptism means I believe in a pattern of faith that's consistent from the Old Testament to the New Testament. By faith, men acted, and then God blessed. Notice, if you will, with me through Hebrews chapter 11, the Faith Hall of Fame. In every one of those, you'll see by faith, the people did something. And when they did it, God saved them. By faith, Noah built an ark. God saved them. By faith, Abraham sacrificed his son, and God saved him. And as you go through, you see that by faith, they act. And as they act, at that point, they are saved. That's the same thing that applies to us today. In 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 12, there's also an antitype or symbol of which now saves us. It's a baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection by faith in Jesus Christ. Number six, baptism means that I believe that when my faith is active, we are making an exodus out of sin and a reign of darkness into the kingdom of God's Son, Jesus Christ. When we obey God through baptism, we're putting off the old man and we are clothing ourselves in Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. When you and I obey Christ through baptism, we're reenacting what we see as the Israelites crossed from that land of death in Egypt and went into the wilderness by crossing into the Red Sea. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And so when Saul of Tarsus met Jesus on the road, he repented for three days in fasting. He spent time not knowing what to do, and God sent to him a preacher named Ananias. And as Ananias preached the gospel to Saul of Tarsus, he finished his sermon in Acts twenty-two sixteen. 16. And in that passage, he says, And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Number seven, Baptism means I'm following the example of the apostles and all Christians of time past in how to be added to the Lord's church. Each one of the apostles were baptized. Each one of the examples in the book of Acts where we see where Christians are added to the church happens at the point of baptism. And so as you and I read in our Bibles, we see 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by, for by one spirit, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and all of us have been made to drink into one spirit. We're added when we are, when we are baptized to the Lord's church, Acts chapter two and verse forty seven. And as we do that, we're following the example not only of Jesus, but of all Christians of times past. J.W. McGarvey, many years ago, preached a two-hour sermon. And in that two-hour sermon, he read every single verse of the New Testament that had anything to do with baptism. When you have time, if you're studying this subject, I encourage you to go through your Bibles and read every passage about baptism. And as you read each passage, write down what the purpose of that baptism is. As you do that, You'll free yourself from misunderstandings and denominational doctrines. You'll free yourself from the ideas of man, and you'll open yourself up to the ideas of God. As we read our New Testaments, you see that in order to become a New Testament Christian, you must know the Word of God. No person becomes a Christian by accident. Romans 10 and verse 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. To become a Christian, you must learn to trust your Bible and to trust God in the hope that he's given to us. Hebrews 11.6 tells us about that trust, or as the Bible says, faith. And it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. In order to become a New Testament Christian, you must be willing to repent of your sins. Truly these times of ignorance, Paul would say in Acts 17, Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now God calls all men everywhere to repent. You see, Luke 13, 3 tells us that unless we repent, we will also likewise perish. We see in God's word that it's necessary for us to be willing to confess the name of Jesus Christ to other people. And then you see the importance of baptism. 
Baptism is what adds us to the Lord's church. As we reenact the death, burial, and resurrection, Romans 6, 3, and 4, we see that we are now added to the Lord's church. Baptism is important, not because of that outward water that's there, not because of any belief in an idea of holy water. Baptism is important because it's an action that shows our faith in Jesus. 